Hey everybody, we're starting a new series every week where we're going to be looking at some of the settings that Logic has for MIDI. Now MIDI is one of the most integral parts of what Logic is and how it functions, and yet it can be really confusing sometimes to get it all set up in, in the right way or a way that works for you. Part of the problem is, is that we have song settings and we have preferences and things in different places across the board. So we have many different places where things actually get set up for MIDI. And so I want to actually explore some of the finer details of that. Today, specifically, we're looking at the chase features inside Logic for MIDI. And chasing is something that happens in a few different ways. But I think it's really important to understand one thing that you've probably noticed as you've been using Logic, especially if you're new to Logic or new to MIDI or really not an advanced MIDI user. There's a couple quirks here that, that really are interesting, but we can deal with. The one we're going to look at today, like I said, is chasing. And what chasing refers to anytime we come through and we start playback in the middle of a MIDI note, it's the setting that tells Logic what to do with the note that's in progress. So right now, the default is like this. So this is the default. I'll show you how to get there in a second, but I'm going to push play. You'll hear nothing. And then the next note starts. So that right there is the issue that we're looking at. So then, how do we actually change or adjust this? Let's come in, I'll show you exactly where to find it. For this particular setting, it's a project setting under MIDI. And here we have a few different options. We have general, input filter, chase, which is what we're gonna look at, and then clip length. With chase, the notes option is turned off by default, and we have to turn it on, and that will actually then trigger sustained notes, which are in the middle of the note. And now it'll play every time. There is one thing you need to still keep in mind with that, and that is if it's like a note in a synthesizer that has a motion sequence or a different attack and then a held out sustain, it's not going to start in the middle of the sustain section. It's going to trigger at the very beginning. So if it's a tempo-based note that's going on, you might still want to go to a downbeat that has that note in it or to leave this off. Now, the other thing we have here is the in no transpose instrument channel strips. Right now, if I had one of those turned on, let's see, that is found over here. So for instance, the bass part in the extended regions down here, we have the no transpose checkbox, which means it won't transpose under any of the normal transposition tools. This we would use oftentimes with drums because we don't want to accidentally or have Logic transpose this if we change keys or the, use some of the other global tracks or just under other circumstances. So we make that so we turn it off and then it wouldn't transpose. But if this is set to no transpose with the settings how they are now, it still won't trigger it partway through until it's not a no transpose, and then it does. If we want all of them just to be chased down, every time you push play, no matter where you are, then just make sure all three of these checkboxes are turned on. Now, this, is it really that big a deal? First of all, I don't know. For some people, I think that they just start working in a way where they hit it on downbeats, but sometimes with some of the songs I'm working on, I might have a held out synthesizer note that lasts 6, 8, 10, 12 bars. And in those cases, I feel it's really important to have this turned on so that way, if I'm playing a section in the middle, I can hear what it actually sounds like instead of missing parts that started 6 bars earlier. So I think in that case, it's at least important to understand where to make this change, what it does, and then you can decide if it's something you actually want to implement in your particular project. The last thing to think about is that because this is a project setting, it's not a global thing. You can't just set it once in one project and have it move to the other ones. 
In fact, if you have a system of templates you're using where you always pull up the same templates, you might want to change it there. But if you already have a bunch of songs you want to change this in, you have to go through and change them in each one individually. Okay, that's it for today. Like I said, we're going to do a series of these topics about MIDI settings that affect your projects. I hope you're having a great week, and I hope you enjoyed this little video, and I will see you in the next one.